parable of the unforgiving servant. I mean, this, this, this parable, remember a parable, is a narrative or a story in which Jesus teaches us something. He's teaching us about himself, teaching us about the Father, teaching us about how we love our neighbor, teaching us about theology. It's just a great teaching tool. He tells a story, so it's not just some dogmatic textbook, right? Which some people get excited when they read. I don't. I like stories. So you have this narrative, you have the, the, the king and this guy, he's settling debts, and this guy comes to him with a massive debt. I'm not talking like, okay, I took out a thousand dollar loan to go on a mini vacay or something. I'm talking massive national debt. You know, this is something a whole country owes, almost. This guy owes a lifetime worth of money to the king. And he pleads with me, he says, be merciful, show your mercy to me. And uh, we'll, I'll figure this out. And the king, you know what? He cancels it. He cancels the debt. And he says, worry not about it. It is forgiven. And what does this guy do? What does the, the servant do? Kind of the same thing we do. I mean, on Sunday morning, we're forgiven a lifetime of debt. We're forgiven sin. We're forgiven everything from womb to tomb. We are absolved in the blood of Jesus. And what do we do when we leave church on Sunday morning? Do we go out and love our neighbor unconditionally? Do we forgive everybody as Jesus has forgiven us? Do we go out and live sacrificially, taking the abuse from our neighbor and loving them in return as Christ does for us? Or do we, do we abuse? Do we, do we harm? Do we neglect? Do we forget that we've been forgiven and live as if we're just another member of society? And that's what this guy does. He goes and he finds his neighbor who owes him like five bucks. He owes him for a sandwich. You know, the guy borrowed five dollars for a sandwich. And he chokes the life out of him and throws him in prison until he can pay it all off. And then the master is furious, finds the guy and says, you wicked little servant, you silly goose. I forgave you all this and you do this? No. And he throws him in jail until he can pay the last penny. And then Jesus ends it with a great gospel proclamation. So it will be for you if you do not forgive your neighbor from your heart. Luther uses this in the fifth petition of the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Are we forgiven because we forgive? Is that the condition? Or is the reality because we are forgiven, we will forgive? That's the reality that's being taught here is because you are forgiven, you will forgive. That's why the master's so angry at the servant is you don't get it. You don't understand what has happened and you continue living this way. No, we who are created a new and holy absolution now forgive. Luther even says the reality that you and I forgive our neighbor is a great comfort because we know that only way we can do this is because we're forgiven. Because Christ has absolved us of all of the debt we owe to the Father, we now freely forgive our neighbor, not holding any grudges, not getting upset, but just absolving and letting it go. And that's the point of the parable of the unforgiving servant. We have been forgiven much, therefore we forgive. We have been loved. What does it say? We love as Christ first loved us. So let us take comfort in that. You are absolutely forgiven, pardoned of all your sins. And may the Holy Spirit grant you a freedom of conscience, a joyful heart that now goes about doing the same thing for your neighbor and giving them that same joy that you have. God bless you all. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Higher Things video shorts. Remember to like, subscribe for notifications, and donate to support Higher Things at higherthings.org slash giving. If you like this video, check out our website, higherthings.org, and check out more content from Higher Things.